Here we are at the warm-up continued from our 2.2 number three set of notes. Uh, now that we've actually gone ahead and found that derivative of that particular function, recall uh, that f prime of x came out to be 3x squared minus 3, we can go ahead and find the slopes at different target points. Uh, so for example, here is x equals negative 2. Pretty much we can go ahead and find the slope tangent to this function, or that original function, at this particular x value negative 2. And pretty much all it is is plugging the value in and seeing what that slope comes out to be. So it looks like for this one we end up with 3 times negative 2 squared minus 3. Negative 2 squared comes out to be 4 times 3 gives us 12 minus 3, so it looks like the slope comes out to be 9. When we try throwing 1 in, we end up with f prime of 1, which is just 3 times, I'm sorry, negative 1 I should say, squared minus 3. Negative 1 squared gives us positive 1 times 3 gives us 3 minus 3, which in the end just comes out to be 0. The next one, we end up then with throwing 0 into the function. So we have f prime of 0 is equal to 3 times 0 squared minus 3. 0 squared is just 0 times 3 is still just 0. So it looks like it comes out to be negative 3. f prime of 1, in other words, finding the tangent slope at 1 for that function comes out to be 3 times 1 squared minus 3. 1 squared is just 1 times 3 is 3 minus 3. So it looks like that tangent slope is 0. And lastly, at 2, f prime of 2 comes out to be 3 times 2 squared minus 3. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 minus 3. So which that comes out to be 9. Now the whole reason why we were going ahead and finding all of these different tangent slopes is to go ahead and graph them on similar to an xy coordinate plane. So here is actually that original function x cubed minus 3x and we notice that at different um, x values we end up with uh, the corresponding pretty much you could consider them like y values in terms of our graph. Because again, these are different x values that we threw into the function. It's almost like a y value for its own. In fact, it's actually y prime is equal to that. y prime is equal to that. y prime. In other words, these are the first derivative slopes at different target x values. So on our graph, we have the point negative 2, 9 which unfortunately on the graph we can't actually go ahead and plot because it only goes up to 3, but you can imagine it's somewhere up here. Then, at 1, I'm sorry, this should say negative 1, we ended up with that y prime coming out to be 0. So at negative 1, we had a point at 0. At 0, we ended up with y prime, that slope of the tangent, coming out to be negative 3. So that would be about here. Then at 1, we saw it came out to be 0. And then at 2, it came out to be 9. So again, just pretty much exaggerating that right there. And so when we connect the dots, we should end up with something that looks like this. So there should be a little bit more of a curvature down here, but I think you guys get the general idea. Now, 
Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more in depth about how this actually works. But again, x are all these different x values. And these actually represent the slopes at those particular different x values in terms of y's. Okay. Now, just a really quick one, like a preview. Notice here how it goes from um, kind of like a, a relative maximum. Well, if you were to take the tangent slope there, in other words, where it grazes it just one time, we see that that tangent slope is zero. And that's in fact actually why we actually see this point here at negative one, zero. Likewise, we see it happening at one comma negative two. If you did that tangent slope there, we notice that that tangent slope comes out to be uh, zero. And that's in fact why there is um, it crossing the, the x-axis specifically at that x value, the y kind of value is considered to be zero. And we'll talk a lot more in depth on like how these graphs are working. And pretty much actually, if you were to even just have the function, what the uh, derivative would even just look like without necessarily actually applying the definition of your derivative. Even if we were to actually take our function, notice f prime of x is equal to three x squared minus three. Well, that's actually just a quadratic that has been shifted down three units and has been vertically stretched by a factor of three. And in fact, we can even see that here. Uh, but again, we were just kind of throwing in some different target points to see what those slopes were. Uh, but this would more or less be the general shape of our derivative graph. Again, though, that is our warm-up continued from our 2.2 number three set of notes.